CBS News Miami. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Naja Sherman and welcome to CBS News Miami's 4 p.m. Quickcast. Let's take a look at today's top stories. Off the top, dangerous moments for an older adult man. He was robbed in Northwest Miami Dade. CBS News Miami's Peter Dinch spoke with the victim. Here's what he had to say. There is a safety alert for Miami Dade police after a 71 year old Northwest Miami Dade man is robbed and pistol whipped. He shows us dramatically how the two young suspects lunged at him with their weapons. He thought that he might lose his life. We are going to hear from him and Miami Dade police as well on the latest in this investigation. That story is coming up tonight, starting live at 5:30. In Doral, Peter Dench, CBS News, Miami. An accidental shooting has left a man dead at a Miramar apartment complex. Police responded late last night. They started CPR until rescue crews arrived at the scene. The man was taken to Memorial Regional Hospital. He was later pronounced dead. Officers are working with a suspect who is a friend of the victim. The suspect claims the shooting was accidental. Police say the investigation is in its early stages, but they believe this was a tragic accident. Always alerting, always tracking. This is Next Weather. And taking a live look outside, what a beautiful day across South Florida. And it sounds like the good weather sticks around for the weekend. Next Weather meteorologist Cindy Pressler is tracking what's ahead. It's going to be a windy weekend, though, Naja, and that's going to be the big story this weekend. Plus, we've got these dry conditions. Stay alert for these little grass fires or even brush fires that can pop up very quickly when we have conditions like this. The grass is crunchy and dry. 80 degrees at this point, but our high today did make it up to 83, and our winds out of the east again. Gust highest gust so far has been 26 miles per hour, but uh, those winds are going to increase overnight and Saturday should be our windiest day. So there are some things to keep in mind here. Gusts over 30 miles per hour both Saturday and Sunday, and there could even go into Monday, although I think it back off just slightly. Secure items on balconies and patios, your trash cans, they could end up in the neighbor's yard if you don't to bring them into the garage. Plants on the balconies and so forth. Stay alert for grass fires, brush fires. They they can get out of control, poor marine conditions as well as we head through the weekend too. So unfortunately, this is the weekend that we're going to see that happening. Right now, I'm watching some smoke here from a prescribed burn. This is in Collier County, but as you can see with the east wind that's carrying that smoke well to the west, I haven't seen anything else showing up here in uh, Broward or Miami-Dade County. But uh, again, dry conditions that can happen very quickly. And our, our heat, our dryness is not really going to go away. Our lower humidity will stay with us through the week and just slightly increasing by next week. But this is not going to be a big increase in humidity. We'll stay dry. It is the dry season after all, and that's exactly what we're going to get. Now let's time out these wind gusts. Today, 25 increasing overnight into tomorrow, 25 to 35 mile per hour gusts. This is Saturday afternoon, strong onshore flow. That ridge of high pressure is actually strengthening. And then on Sunday, 25 to 35. And again, you could see some gusts as high as 40 miles per hour this dry air. So therefore, small craft advisory in effect until 8 p.m. on Sunday. That's something to keep in mind and rip current risk for the beaches with the nice temperatures going on and all the sunshine. A lot of folks will be out on the beach. High pressure is building off the eastern seaboard with low pressure coming in across the central plain. So that's creating that tight pressure gradient. Dry air still hanging on, even though it looks like it's moving out. Nah, it's staying here. So we're going to hang on to that. So again, breezy, high pressure, maybe an inland shower, but that's about it. Temperatures are going to stay right here in the lower 80s until next week. We'll start warming up, but look at all that sunshine. Cindy, thank you. Former Florida Senator and Governor Bob Graham was laid to rest today. The military honor guard transported him to a private burial service for his family. Earlier, hundreds of mourners paid their final respects. Flags will be flown at half staff until sunset today. A public memorial service for Graham will be held Saturday, May 11th in his hometown of Miami Lakes. He was 87 years old. Search is on for two men caught on camera. They were beating a man outside of a grocery store. Police say it all started when the suspects parked in front of the store in the fire lane. The victim tried to go around them, and that's when the suspects got out of their car. One of them pulled out a gun and fired a single shot near the victim's head. He called 911. The other guy put the gun at my head and fired above my left ear. 
He shoved the gun right into my face, into my nose and my eyes. The suspects were last seen taking off in the silver car. The former National Enquirer publisher was back on the stand today for cross-examination. It is in the former president's New York, New York criminal trial. CBS News Miami's Bradley Blackburn reports from New York. Former President Donald Trump called his criminal trial rigged as he headed into a New York courtroom Friday, but still seemed pleased with the testimony so far. Yeah, I think yesterday went very well in this courthouse. Uh, it was... Uh, it should be over. The case is over. You heard what was said. Trump's lawyers are continuing their cross-examination of former National Enquirer publisher David Pecker. During his days-long testimony, Pecker explained how he and Trump's former lawyer, Michael Cohen, worked together to catch and kill negative stories about Trump in an effort to prevent alleged affairs from becoming scandals during his 2016 presidential campaign. The DA's case is really rises and falls with David Pecker's testimony because he is the linchpin behind their theory of this sort of conspiratorial scheme to influence the election. Trump faces 34 felony counts of falsifying business records. He's accused of funneling so-called hush money payments through Michael Cohen to adult film star Stormy Daniels before the 2016 election. It's not a crime if it wasn't done with the purpose of influencing the election. The presumptive Republican presidential nominee has repeatedly expressed frustration that the trial is keeping him off the campaign trail. Today, he expressed frustration that it's keeping him from celebrating his wife Melania's birthday. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. The former president also said this morning that he listened last night to Thursday's U.S. Supreme Court arguments about his immunity case. Trump said the argument was brilliant and he thought the justices questions were great. Now to the Dolphins draft 2024. The Dolphins first round pick Chop Robinson is set to meet the media. Robinson surrounded by friends and family. The Fins use their 21st overall pick to select him. He fills a hole on the defensive side after key players left the team this offseason. Robinson spoke about the moment he was drafted and his dedication to the game. Honestly, it means everything. You know, I've been I've been playing football since five years old. Facing this dream since five years old, so sacrificing everything, not partying, and just you know being who I am, working out every day, just being consistent with you know, staying true to myself and staying focused. I did a lot of the sacrifice, uh, being away from my family, also losing my my oldest brother, my oldest sister. It's been my motivation to you know stay focused and just keep grinding. So I never I never stopped, and I'm I'm finally you know where where I wanted to be, but the work doesn't stop. CBS Miami's Mike Cugno talks with Robinson one-on-one -on -one this afternoon. That is tonight on CBS News Miami at 5. And the draft resumes tonight in Detroit with rounds 2 and 3. The Dolphins have the 23rd pick in the second round tonight. Then they have the picks in the 5th, 6th, and 7th rounds to wrap up the draft tomorrow afternoon. And our coverage of the draft doesn't stop here. Join Steve Goldstein, Kim Bocamper, and Mike Cugno for a special edition of Game Changers tonight at 10 on TV 33 and streaming on CBS News Miami and Pluto TV. We will break down their first and second round picks. And then tomorrow night, we will recap all the action and assess what this could mean for the team. That is Saturday night at 1130. And now to the road to the Stanley, Stanley Cup playoffs. The Florida Panthers have a commanding three games to none lead over the Tampa Bay Lightning. Panthers star Matthew Kachuk pushed the team to victory, scoring two goals last night to defeat Tampa Bay 5-3. to three. The Cats are now on the verge of beating their in-state rivals for the first time ever in the playoffs. Game four is tomorrow afternoon in Tampa. Two road closures set to get underway. What you need to know after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to CBS News Miami's 4 p.m. Quick Cast. Authorities are cracking down on campus protests and the war in Gaza. It's over safety concerns. CBS News Miami's Jason Allen explains. Overnight, Ohio State University joined the growing list of colleges demonstrating against Israel's war in Gaza. Earlier Thursday, a similar scene at Emory University. Social media video showed officers tearing down tents. 
stopped and appearing to use a taser on someone pinned to the ground. It came a day after more than 50 people were arrested at the University of Texas at Austin. Both police and protesters have at times crossed a line, says Greg Lukianoff, the president of the Foundation for Individual Rights and Expression. You don't have a generalized First Amendment right to you know, turn the public area of a campus into a, um, a camping ground. Um, but definitely we've seen at places like Emory and places like UT Austin, um, police uh, taking things w much, much too far. Most detained demonstrators have not been charged with violent offenses, but there have been several instances of threatening and abusive behavior. Our Nancy Chen spoke to one Jewish student at Columbia University who grew up in Israel. Many of us knew people or the music festival or that lived nearby. I'm sorry, I'm getting very emotional about that. Um, I can see you're getting emotional. And adding to that, the situation where people scream hateful speech who have harassed and attacked both verbally and physically people is just making it impossible to be here. Lukianov says the lack of constructive dialogue between both sides on college campuses points to broader failures in American academia. Campuses should be sort of citadels to self-reflection and asking yourselves, do I really understand this? What I benefit from talking to someone that I disagree with? And I think that universities, particularly elite universities, have gotten really bad at doing this. I talked to a lot of students who came out yesterday, in some cases, just to see what might happen, maybe anticipating more chaos. What they saw instead was an event this time where both sides were able to have a voice. It did get a little emotional at times, but this time it never got out of control. Jason Allen, CBS News in Austin, Texas. Happening tonight, Miami drivers, listen up. Road closures are set to go into effect for an ongoing construction project. Take a look, Northwest 3rd Avenue will be closed from Northwest 14th Street to 15th Street. The closure starts at 10 tonight and runs through 530 Monday morning. It's to remove a portion of a bridge over the roadway. Then starting on Monday, more closures take effect. Northwest 14th Street will be closed from Northwest 3rd Avenue to 1st Place, and that will be from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Saturday until further notice. Here's a look at what is coming up on CBS News Miami at 5. A warning from the CDC. It's about the trendy vampire facial. Why they say the cosmetic procedure could do more harm than good. That's ahead at 530. And that's your CBS News Miami Quick Cast. I'm Naja Sherman. Stay tuned for more news right here on CBS News Miami. And have a wonderful Friday.